you know, as I was building this base, and putting it together with those wedges, I've always wanted to do that with wedges on an anvil base. That was fun. And shining this old boy up and getting ready to do this, I thought, man, it's going to be hard to going to be hard to load this guy up and send him down the road. But when it gets right down to it, I've got to say, I'm excited. I'm just excited to hear where it goes and what it does and what its next life is going to be like. So if you get this thing, if it's your shop that it ends up in, will you let me know what it is you're going to make and what you're going to create? And here's, let me put you on notice. If you need to sell this thing, just sell it. It's your property. That's the magic of an anvil. It will always find a place where somebody is going to make something beautiful on it or at least be smitten by their conscience until they do. Anvils have a way of finding their way to the work. So keep me in the loop. I would love to be able to sort of keep track of where this old boy goes and what he does. Part of what makes it easier to send this old boy off on his new errand is that we got two anvils from the auction when this one showed up. And you haven't got to look at the other one yet, but let me just say it's a dandy. It is, in fact, a trophy anvil, and so one of these days we'll shine that up. I think that's going to be, that's probably, I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen with that. It might be Nate's and his shop when he gets that set up, or it might go in an office somewhere, but it's definitely going to hang around the place for a good long time, as far as I know. But let's talk about shipping. A lot of you thought, well, you know, I'm not going to enter because I don't want to ship that overseas. I'd should be prohibitively expensive and I don't want to obligate him to have to do that and I appreciate that sentiment but the fact is I have a friend Jeff Lindenmeyer you've seen the inside of his shop and you've seen his 650 pound mouse hole anvil which he bought in Austria and he went ahead and bought two or three other anvils to put on the pallet because I think he spent six hundred dollars to have that pallet full of anvils shipped from Austria to Portland Oregon now that doesn't seem like much money to me for traveling that distance with that kind of a load. And so, yeah, I'm not excited about shipping this thing to Thailand or Tokyo or Australia, but I'm ready to. So if it's you that ends up with this thing, it's going to be heading your way. And we've got it strapped down tight. I don't know how to hold it on here any tighter. And it needs to be because sometimes shipping can be rough. And there are mistakes made in shipping just like in every other business, but they're going to have to work at it to hurt this thing. And I just... Don't think they'll be able to hurt it very bad. And besides that, this anvil's already come across the ocean from England once in its life, so there would be a certain poetic justice in it going back home, wouldn't there? Fair warning, if you win this thing, you better have three or four really good and reasonably strong buddies lined up to help you get it into your truck, or out of your truck, as the case may be, because gravity has a profound influence on this particular item and it, it it'll make you grunt getting it in and out of the chevy that's for sure so it's going to take a few weeks you know a couple probably for me to get in contact and become familiar with who wins this and get their permission to let the channel know about them and their intentions and if they want to sell it we could probably let the channel know that and there would be a few people who would be interested probably so we're not done talking about this old anvil i hope to get new installments on on what happens where this anvil lives for a long time to come. And in the meantime, keep looking for that anvil that's going to end up in your shop. They don't usually just show up because you want them to, but you don't have to look too hard for too long to sort of shift the odds in your favor. Keep it in your conversations. Talk to everybody you know. Write a few emails. Go to a few auctions. Check Craigslist, snoop around in the old barns and the old machine shops, and sooner or later, the anvil that you've just got to have to make the things that you've just got to make is going to show up. Well, the time is here. It's 9 o'clock. We're going to click the button. We're going to find out who it is that's going to get that beast of an anvil. And here we go. Click. Drawing. There it is. There it is. Jake Herring. Jake Herring. Jake, you want an anvil. Okay, we're going to get in contact with you. We've got an email address here, which nobody is seeing. 
We're going to reach out. Hopefully you're going to get this. Hopefully you're watching your email. You and I have got a lot to talk about. You don't get fun like this very often. We've had a great time doing this, and I can guarantee you we're going to be giving away more anvils on this channel. Is this Jake? It is. Jake, how in the world are you doing this morning, man? <laughs> Good. Are, are you an EMT? Have you been working all night? Is that what's been going on? Well, I just can't imagine how this outcome could be any better. The winner is Jake Herring. He lives in Oklahoma. He's 27 years old and he's been blacksmithing for six months. Here's the kicker. He and his bride have a little boy, Gabriel, one year old. And Jake is so driven to blacksmith, even though he has a full-time job as an EMT, that he blacksmiths outside. He didn't let not having a shop slow him up. He's got a forge and an anvil and a slack tub and a vice, and he's going for it. I just, I just can't hardly wrap my head around the fact that he is exactly who we've designed this course for, and he's going to get a complimentary copy. And I just cannot wait to see what he does on this anvil. So it's boxed up. Well, it's palletized. I've got it on a pallet. I'm either going to ship it this week or drive it down there middle of April. I don't know. I'll talk to him. He probably doesn't want to wait. But I'll let you know how it goes. And in the meantime, thank you to everyone who participated. This seems to have had pretty much a storybook ending. Who would have guessed it? Thanks for watching. All right. I can't wait to hear from you. All right. Thanks, Jake. Congratulations. Right, thank you, guys. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you.